Welcome to another flipped video. In this one here, we're going to be exploring the fundamentals of redox, the amazing electron transfer reactions that happen all around us. In fact, we rely on them when we use batteries in watches, iPhones, iPads, etc. So we're going to be talking about the basics here of redox reactions and finding out what does that term mean, redox. And a typical example that we do in the chemistry lab early on in chemistry is metal displacement. So let's have a look here. I've got a beaker and I've got some uh, copper sulfate solution. So we pour some of that into here. The beautiful blue of copper sulfate. And here I have a strip of zinc, zinc metal. So if I place that into there, let's see what's going to happen. And while that's going on, it's happening instantaneously. Look at that. Black already. So something weird's going on. Let's place it in there and just let the processes of the chemi chemicals occur. So what is a metal displacement reaction? Well, this is what it is. All right, so a reaction which a more active metal will displace a less active metal from solution. So displace means to change positions. Okay, so you've probably heard people say uh, um, people are displaced from their homeland. Uh, displacement in terms of physics is the distance between your initial starting point and your finishing point. So it's a, it's a position change. Well, here we're talking about a position change of um, elements. And so what's going on in this beaker here, if I just draw a diagrammatical representation here, Okay, so let's have a look here. Now, if I lift this up very carefully, we'll see what's going on. You can see that there is a brown deposit on the outside of the metal. So a brown deposit is happening on the, on the uh, outside of the metal. So we know that copper is like a brownish sort of substance. So we could imply or infer that the copper is somehow forming colored sopper. <laughs> solid copper and that's what's going on so the first observation is a brown substance on the zinc and what's happening there is that the copper in solution the only way that it can form solid copper which is brown is if it accepts electrons and becomes what's called reduced so we just write here a brown solid Okay, and so what's happening, it gets electrons. And so therefore, we say that it's being reduced. Okay, so reduction is the gaining of electrons. Right? Reduction is the gaining of electrons. And so copper's been reduced here. So those electrons had to come from somewhere. Well, they came from the zinc. So let's write uh, what's going on in the zinc here. Let's keep the same color. We've got... Uh, And so when atoms lose um, electrons, we say that they are oxidized, okay? And so this has been oxidized. And that's the loss of electrons. So here we have two things happening. We have the reduction, the gaining of electrons, and we have the oxidization or the loss of electrons. So they happen simultaneously. They happen at the same time. As one loses, another one accepts. So let's look at our, our term up here. Re, um, or red, is the same for reduction. And then we have ox for oxidation. So sometimes people like to think of a red ox, right? An ox being the animal, and it's red. So a red ox means redox. And we can remember this little, um, um, I guess you could call it, mnemonic here so that is oil rig a way to remember uh, which process either loses or gains electrons so that's what's going on here okay um, of course because we start talking about oxidation and reduction you know oxidation and reduction and these movement of electrons we get the movement we get new terms happening so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this off we're going to look at another example Excuse me. We're going to look at another example of this redox reaction or metal displacement and see if we can work out which one's been oxidized, which one's been reduced, and uh, 
get a little bit deeper into the fundamentals of redox. Catch you soon. Moving on to another example, and this is a very familiar example. Uh, with this picture, you can see here that this is a typical example you get in labs. Okay, you do this in a, in junior chemistry quite a lot, and you can see I've drawn a picture here as well. So we've got a bit of magnesium. Magnesium is a in the solid state is a metal ribbon, and then you have it in hydrochloric acid. And of course, you know that it produces bubbles of hydrogen gas. Okay, you know it's hydrogen gas because you do the pop test. So let's have a look at what we've been learning so far. Something has to be oxidized, something has to be reduced. So let's start off with the magnesium. So the magnesium here is in the solid state. And you notice the observation, it seems like it disappears. Well, it dissolves because it's actually turning into the magnesium ion. And the only way that that can happen is if it gets oxidized. It loses electrons and then it's lost its electrons. Okay. So on the product side, it's lost the electrons. Those electrons have gone from the magnesium to the hydrochloric acid. Now, what's in the hydrochloric acid? Well, we know that we're producing H2 gas, so obviously the electrons have got to go to the H plus portion of the HCl. So let's do that now. We've got H plus in an aqueous solution. It's gaining an electron to form hydrogen gas. Because we've got a 2 here, we have to put a 2 there to balance the hydrogens. And now we've got 2 times the positive 1 charge. So we've got 2 plus charges, we need 2 negative charges. And so now we're balanced now in terms of atoms, and we're balanced in terms of electrons. So that's what's going on inside that test tube or beaker. So magnesium has been oxidized, right? so that's oxidation occurring there. And then the other half of this complete equation, or the other half reaction, is a reduction reaction where the H plus ions are being reduced by gaining the electrons to form um, hydrogen gas. Now here are some new terms. Let's get the green. Okay, so if this here is losing the electrons, those electrons are coming across, oh, well, it was green, it's actually yellow. Let's try it again. Oh, we've got blue. Why would you expect green inside a pen with a green lid? All right, so um, the electrons are coming from over here and combining with the H+. So it's causing the H plus to become reduced. So the electrons from the magnesium are causing the H plus to be reduced. So in essence, we could sort of say that the magnesium, because it's producing the electrons and causes the H plus to be reduced, it's known as the reductant. Okay, the reductant. It's the chemical species that causes the other chemical species to be reduced, and it has done that, right, by its losing two electrons. Conversely, we could say that the H+, plus, because the H+, plus are accepting these electrons, in a way they're pulling them off the magnesium, one way of thinking about it, and because these are taking the electrons from that, it's causing the magnesium to be oxidized. So therefore, the H plus can be called an oxidant. So we have these terms now, reductant and oxidant. So let's write, write down a definition of these. Okay. Right, let's stop there and let's just read over that again. The reductant is the chemical species that causes the other species in the reaction to be reduced while itself is oxidized. Well, let's just go back to our example here and check that out. Magnesium causes the H plus to be reduced. Yes, it does, because H plus is being reduced to um, hydrogen gas by the acceptance of the electrons from the magnesium. So because the magnesium is losing the electrons, it's causing the electrons to reduce H plus. So yes, um, the chemical species, magnesium in our case, has caused the other, whoops, let's put in a, has caused the other species to be reduced. Yes, this has been reduced while itself has been oxidized. Yes, magnesium is losing electrons and therefore oxidized. So, in here, the reductant is the chemical species that causes the others to be reduced while it becomes oxidized. 
and the the um, oxidant is the same sort of thing. The oxidant is the chemical species that causes the other one to be oxidized while itself becomes reduced. So let's write that down. Okay, so there's some key terms. Oxidized, reduced, oxidant, reductant. So what I like to do is, first of all, work out from our equation which one um, is being oxidized and which one's being reduced write the half equations and then go back to my de um, definition and say, okay, whichever one is being oxidized is actually the reductant. Whichever one's being reduced is actually the oxidant. oxidant. All right, let's rub this off and let's do another hands-on experience and see if we can work out what's going on with the uh, displacement reaction. Okay, this is the last section. We're going to do this fairly quickly because we're getting short of time. Here we have a measuring cylinder with some copper round uh, in a coil. And we've got some um, silver nitrate solution here, which we're going to add into that uh, test tube. And we're going to see, test tube, measuring cylinder, and see if the copper, um, if anything happens. And we're back at looking at the last thing very quickly, just to see if uh, what's going on with this one. Let's say I have some copper in some silver nitrate solution. Now we want to work out which one is the most active metal. Remember the definition that the more active metal will displace a less active metal from solution. So we have silver here in solution. Okay, so we have silver ions in solution. Okay, now we're back and we're going to be looking at what happened when we tipped the uh, silver nitrate into the copper. And as you can probably see here, I'm just going to move it carefully across. We have amazing reaction. So we can see here we've got pure crystals of silver. I've taken a close-up of this and, and uh, that should be appearing at the side now. Although it was a little bit uh, a while ago and these crystals now are a lot bigger. And if you look carefully, I'll put the white behind it, you should be able to see that the solution is a little bit blue as well. Right, so the solution is a little bit blue. So let's look at what's going on there. Okay, so we've got the copper here. We can notice there's silver plating out. So that's telling us that we've got solid silver plating out on the outside of the copper. So in order to, to do that, we had to have the silver in solution, which is the Ag+. It had to accept an electron to form solid silver. And so that is reduction. So silver is being reduced to metallic silver which means the electrons had to come from the copper. And so that means the copper, solid, was actually losing electrons, and therefore it was being oxidized. And we have further evidence of that because the bluish tinge of the solution is the indicator that tells us that we have copper 2 plus ions. Remember, the blue color of copper sulfate is due to the 2 plus ions. Okay, and so... Um, it, it's actually due to the water surrounding the copper uh, iron and uh, and that's what's happening there okay so we've got two bits of evidence we've got a redox reaction here now remember these are half equations because the full equation would be and let's do it in, let's do it in pink the full equation would be Cu S right so solid copper then we have silver nitrate so the 